Setiap objektif, students should be able to explain and discuss the heat treatment, hardenability and annealing process for metal alloys as well as other types of um, material processing which you are going to look at afterwards. Uh, meanwhile, for lesson objectives, at the end of the semester, students should be able to analyze the physical properties of engineering materials and concept of corrosion and metal alloys microstructure, phase diagram and heat treatment processes. Uh, as for the topic content, these are the things that we are going to learn for today. Number one is heat treatment, which includes hardenability, annealing, normalizing, tempering, or tempering, and mar tempering, uh, which we are going to look at on what are the processes involved and its effects towards microstructure. Number two, we are going to look at on the mechanical properties, whereby different properties a different structure will different structure or faces um, which produce will have different mechanical properties well as mentioned to you in previous lecture in materials can be divided into two which is um, ferrous alloy and non-ferrous alloy Ferrous alloy or ferrous metals are actually metals that contain iron and steel. Meanwhile, non-ferrous metals are referred to those metals that do not have iron or iron that do not high that do not have iron components in it. And for heat treatment, heat treatment is actually a process of heating the metal without letting it reach its molt, uh, its molten condition or melting stage and then cooling the metal in a control way to select desired mechanical properties heat treatment is used to make either uh, to to either make the metal stronger or more malleable more resistant to abrasion or more ductile so if you look at the concept for heat treating the ferrous to uh, heat treating the ferrous alloys is that number one to force the metal to do something the normal loss of solubility will not let to do it number two usual case is to cause one phase to dissolve in another when it normally will not so we must have a two-phase region with a single phase region at a high temperature when we heat up to higher temperature the melt the metal becomes one phase then when we cool fast enough or at a faster rate, we retain the high temperature phase at lower temperature and um, uh, where it may exist as uh, that phase or change or transform into something else that is very useful to the um, uh, design or to the uh, final product. Um, before we proceed with the um, this this topic and the heat treatment, these are the terminology that you should uh, uh, remember and you should understand. By right, um, in previous lecture, this terminology is already explained uh, to you or already exposed to you. Like, what are the carbon, a plain carbon steel, plain carbon steel exists between 0 0.03 to 1.2 carbon which is at this area and uh, the location of ferrite this this is the location for alpha ferrite this one is for austenite and this one is for cementite other than that you should also remember the um reactions that occur in iron carbon phase diagram which includes peritactic reaction, eutectic reaction, as well as eutectoid reaction. And if you notice from our previous lecture, eutectoid steel equals to 0.8% of carbon. And if the percentage of carbon is less than 0.8%, then it is called as hypo eutectoid steel. And meanwhile, more than that, it is, no, it is known as hyper eutectoid steel. And again, um, a revision from previous lecture. Once the metal, the iron carbon, uh, yeah, the metal, uh, the steel being um, being cooling, being slowly cooled from uh, austenite temperature, which is um, austenite temperature, uh, then slowly cooled to temperature seven uh, five zero degrees C then it will change from austenite into 100% uh, uh, perlite.
and this is the microstructure for perlite and for hypo eutectoid which is uh, before a eutectoid point here this one slowly cool the temperature uh, slowly cool the steel we change the uh, microstructure uh, into alpha ferrite and perlite and then moving to hyper eutectoid which is the percentage of carbon equals to uh, 1.2 percent for example by right it has to be more than 0.8 percent of carbon that is called as hyper eutectoid and for example uh, the materials being heating being being heated up until austenite temperature uh, which is equals to 950 degree c for this case and then start to cooling down slowly cool forming eutectoid cementite eutectoid cementite and perlite this one and okay so for today we are going to look at on the transformation as well as under cooling for these phases um, um for example um before this i mean in previous lecture you have learned that slow cooling will create um will form different structure of the materials for example um slow slowly cool the uh metal from austenite um phase will form alpha ferrite and cementite however this transformation can be changed um by um uh, by varying the uh, temperature for cooling is either rapid cooling or hot cooling so for example uh, we can we use uh, the um, uh, iron carbon steel phase diagram or system whereby we use uh, c not equal to uh, 0 0.76 weight percent of carbon if you notice here um the cooling temperature reaching seven a uh, six seven five degrees c and maintain at that uh, temperature this one so initially it will form zero percent of perlite when it uh, touch this green line and then after a certain time it will form 50 percent of perlite in it once it reach this dotted line over here or curve and then longer time um will produce 100 percent perlite when it reach this um yeah uh, this red curved line over there so basically we can control and uh, we, we can control the uh transformation of the microstructure of that steel um uh, other than slow cooling or control cooling we can uh, there's also um uh, we can also do a uh, what we call it as a rapid cool in salt bath um, to a desired temperature for example this one firstly we uh, heat it uh, we heat the steel until the temperature until it reach austenite temperature which is above 273 degrees c uh, then the steel um, being placed in salt bath for isothermal transformation they call it at some temperature which is the temperature has to be below austenite temperature then after that uh, hold it for certain duration and uh, moving it to cold water quench uh, at room temperature so this is called as isothermal decomposition of austenite for example uh, let's uh, let's look at the uh, let's look at what what happened to the microstructure when we use isothermal decomposition so this case um from austenite temperature heating it to astronaut temperature then start to cool um uh, to cool it using salt bath at the temperature below than austenite temperature which is equal to zero uh, six uh, seven zero five degrees c for this case after certain duration uh, 
uh, we will start to see a cost per light forming uh, in that steel. Then after 76 minutes, the microstructure changed to um, cost per light. Meanwhile, if you look at this, um, we call it this graph is the um, a graph for arsenide transformation or um, a phase transformation. Um, S curve, this is S curve. S curve next to axis indicate the time necessary for isothermal transformation for arsenide to begin. Okay. And the second curve, this is the second curve indicate the time required for transformation to be completed the phases exist the the, the yeah the phases exist in this uh, graph is cost per light this is cost per light this one is a fine per light and this is the area for binite and the bottom part over here is a uh, martensite phase so uh, this one is uh, the um a cooling uh, i mean a cooling point which is um uh, temperature below than arsenide temperature okay so following this uh, line then you should be able to produce uh, different types of uh, structure which is needed and this one may only occur for uh, carbon steel equals to 0 0.8 weight percent Okay, so isothermal transformation of eutectoid steels at temperature 7, 0, 7 to 7 and about 550 produce per light microstructure. Okay, if you refer to this uh, graph over here, 7 to 7, which is uh, somewhere here, degree. this is uh, referring to um, degree Celsius and this one is for Fahrenheit. Okay, so 7 to 7, somewhere there until... 550 around here so the area around here actually producing a uh, perlite microstructure through hot quenching hot quenching meaning the temperature of the uh, solution is controlled um, uh, into uh, is controlled uh, to certain temperature so that it would drop uh, drastically and transformation temperature decrease in this range the perlite change from coarse to fine structure okay so in this area the same area number three um, rapid quenching okay from uh, rapid quenching seven to seven seven to seven um, rapid quenching from this point case point rapid quenching it will turn into 100% mutton side over here. Later on, you will see the line for 50% um, mutton side and 100% mutton side. Okay, so rapid cooling starting from this point, rapid cooling reaching uh, mutton side. After that, um, okay, this one 7 to 7 until uh, 550. Okay, so 550. From 550 just now, 550 until 250 at this point, this one austenite can um austenite can change into mantasite. Um, uh, sorry, uh, change into binite. Okay, it's a structure between perlite and mantasite. So binite again. Um, if it is if the metal if the steel a uh, hot quench from temperature 550 point here until 250 over here the structure change into binite so the area is somewhere here this is binite area and in binite area it can be divided into two which is upper binite and lower binite um, for upper binite the temperature range from 350 until 550 Whereas for lower binite, it starts from 250 until 350. And um, the, um, the, the, the structure is slightly different between upper binite and lower binite. Okay, so now let's look at the transformation of uh, arsenide to perlite. 
through isothermal transformation. And again, this one occur uh, at eutectoid composition, which is equal to 0.76% of carbon. And the process starts from um, heating the steel or the metal until it reach above astronaut temperature, which is more than 723 uh, 7, 7, degrees C. In this case, it is being heated up until it reaches 7 to 7 degrees C. After that, rapid cooling until temperature uh, 6 to 5 degrees C. And then hold that temperature for a certain duration until it changes from austenite into perlite. Okay, again, start cooling. Uh, start cooling. This line represents cooling uh, line, and then until reach point six to five degree C. So this is a uh, point six to five degree C, and hold that temperature until it reach this one zero percent per light, reaching this line fifty percent per light, and reaching this line is hundred percent per light. If we want to change uh, the microstructure into only 50% per light then the process should stop somewhere here at this line with a dotted line there from there finish it cooling down you should draw a, 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 um, a line moving downward somewhere point here so basically you can control the percentage of structure that you want in that material by controlling the temperature and time same goes to bionite okay this is how you control the formation of a burn of bionite uh, firstly heating up uh, the metal into austenite uh, above austenite temperature so it will change to austenite after that start cooling it that's it cool uh, starts to cooling it then um reaching a uh, reaching for example reaching point uh, reaching temperature of 600 degrees c uh, maintaining at that point it reach uh, 100 percent uh, per light that one is the same case as uh, above uh, the previous slide just now and for by night uh, start to cooling it up to this temperature for example around four uh 490 degree c and then hold that temperature until it transform into 100 percent by night over here and again this transformation only occur for um uh, for uh, carbon equals to 0 0.76 weight percent and the formation of by night is known as uh, diffusion control this is the um, uh, uh, types of bionite that, that might occur, which is upper bionite and lower bionite, as mentioned to you earlier. This is the microstructure for upper bionite, which form between temperature um, 350 and uh, 550. And for lower bionite, it occur between temperature 250 to 350 degrees C. And remember, by night can be formed through hot quenching so the temperature need to be controlled uh, so that it will it will it will not drop drastically other than that the other terminology that or phase that you need to know in uh, um, uh, iron carbon system is that um, uh, spherodite Spherodite refers to a microscopic constituent in some steels composed of, composed of uh, spherical shaped cementite particles in an alpha ferrite matrix. Spherodite is the most ductile and softest type of steel on the granular molecule level. Its purpose is to soften higher carbon steels and produce more formability. Okay. Other than that, uh, mutton side. So this is uh, as mentioned to you just now. Uh, basically, um, uh, the um, uh, the slide that I've prepared to you guys actually may have some repetition on how the process or on how the uh, microstructure being formed. 
okay so that you may understand it better so as mentioned to you just now martensite can be formed uh, through rapid cooling from austenite uh, uh, austenite temperature uh, rapid cooling then it will transform into martensite uh, however it depends whether 50 percent martensite uh, 90 percent martensite or 100% mountain size it depends um um how 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 fast the temperature uh, how fast that um process uh being being cooled being intru being introduced to that metal and for how long okay so a uh, mountain size is a rapid process and it is diffusionless okay and martensite martensite can be divided into two lathe type and plate type or combination of lathe and plate type for lathe type uh, it can be found um, if the carbon content less than um, 0.6 percent over here if the percentage of carbon is more than 0.6 percent then it will have a plate martensite in it however um, if the percentage of carbon is more than one percent it will have 100 percent plate martensite and uh, this is only the terminology ms referring to uh, temperature of martensite start to occur mf referring to temperature of martensite starts to finish and um, after transformation the position of the of carbon atoms in crystal structure will no will have no changes will will not change it will stay there um however the only difference is that um strength and hardness which will which will which will be affected by the carbon content only okay so again when we look at uh, mountain side this is how it occur uh, from uh, austenite then from austenite if 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 uh, you expose it to slow cooling then it will form um, uh, ferrite and uh, cementite but if you quench it or fast cooling you will form a mountain site bct actually referring to set centered tetragonal um, body centered tetragonal crystal structure and afterwards we are going to learn the tempering tempering uh, from mountain side we we, we we introduce a tempering process then it will change back change back to um, uh, ferrite alpha ferrite and cementite mountain side is very hard and brittle uh, and therefore its ductility is um, uh, reducing or decreasing and um, okay now let's look at the transformation involving non-eutectoid composition non-eutectoid um, hyper if if you still remember just now, um, eutectoid point is where the composition of carbon equals to 0.76%. So beyond that, uh, beyond that percentage is known as hyper eutectoid composition, whereby it has pro uh, a pro eutectoid cementite in or I mean, yeah, it's pro eutectoid in it, or some people may call it as pro eutectoid cementite. And uh, below than that is called as hypo eutectoid. Okay. Mm, for um, phase transformation involving non eutectoid composition, is that the curve, the S curve, moving to the left? So for this case, it is very uh, impossible for us to quench from astonite region to form mountain side phase. Uh, so for this case um non-eutectoid is very impossible that's why we always refer to eutectoid composition only if you want to change the steel into a uh, martensite microstructure other than that if we add 
other alloying element into uh, the material into the steel it will change the transition temperature so it'll take some time to reach for example uh, martensite or austenite or ferrite binite and so on and so forth um, example of um, alloying elements includes chromium nickel molybdenum silicon and mangan so this process actually uh, this the the addition of this element will retard the formation of uh, for example from austenite to uh, alpha ferrite and cementite or by night or martensite now let's look at the continuous cooling transformation diagram um, this diagram is used to convert um, it's a conversion of isothermal transformation diagram to continuous cooling transformation diagram or CCT diagram. What is um, uh, CCT diagram? Uh, well, this one, CCT diagram um, is a industrial heat treating operations. In most cases, a steel is not isothermally transformed at temperature above the mountain site sub temperature but continuously cooled from the austenite temperature to room temperature. The Number two, the transformation from austenite to perlite occurs over the range of temperature rather than a single isothermal temperature. As you look at this one, so that's a range temperature. Don't worry, we'll see um, the example afterwards, more example afterwards. The CCT diagram start and finish lines are shifted to longer times and slightly lower below lower temperature below um, around 450 degrees C for arsenite uh, uh, to transform into binite. Okay, so this figure show different cooling rates for eutectoid plain carbon steel cooled continuously from arsenite region, arsenite region to room temperature. Curve A, it's a curve, very cooling, very slow cooling. This one, this is a curve A, such as by shutting off power uh, of an electric furnace and allowing allowing the steel cool as the furnace cool. Microstructure would be cost per light. So this is very slow cooling. By right, um, the specimen being left in the furnace and it, it will start to cool together with the furnace. The uh, graph B, or profile B here, shows a, um, represent a rapid cooling. For example, uh, rem removing austenite steel from furnace and allowing the steel to cool in air. So in this case, fine perlite will be produced. Um, okay, I hope you can imagine on how uh, the process has been conducted. Okay, imagine you have a furnace that you place sample in it, uh, steel in it. After it reaches a certain temperature, then you open up the furnace to take out the specimen and put it somewhere for that specimen to cool it down on its own. I mean, in cool, in normal temperature normal air, normal temperature. From there, fine perlite will be produced. And let's look at um, line C. Uh, line C producing, uh, start, uh, starts with the formation of perlite. Line C, okay, line C reaching this point, so perlite occur in it. But there is insufficient time to complete the austenite to perlite transformation. The remaining austenite do not transform to perlite will transform to martensite at lower temperature 250 degrees C and therefore for line C for for this case the, we will have a combination of uh, perlite and martensite in it okay um, other than that um, for curve E over there is a uh, cooling at a rate at a faster rate uh, then uh, this one will produce martensite structure. Same goes to D. Okay, so, so from astronaut temperature, faster cooling, it will produce martensite temperature. However, for E, it's represented as critical cooling rate because 
if um, the, the the duration or the speed is not fast enough then it will change to line line C whereby it will produce uh, matasite and perlite in it so it has to be um, as fast as possible by referring to this uh, graph temperature versus time so that we can control what are the structure that is needed to be produced okay so now let's look at the example on um, how to determine uh, all those faces okay or how to draw sketch uh, how to draw a line so that we can produce um, uh, required uh, a structure okay so this example uh, let's read it together on the isothermal transformation diagram for 0.45 weight percent carbon um, iron carbon alloy diagram sketch and label the temperature path to produce the following microstructures number one 42% pro eutectoid ferrite and 58% coarse perlite. B, 50% fine perlite and 50% bionite. C, 100% martensite. And D, 50% martensite and 50% austenite. So let's look at one by one. Question A, 42% pro eutectoid ferrite and 58 coarse perlite. Well, uh, when um, when you saw a terms uh, pro eutectoid pro eutectoid ferrite, it is actually uh, referring to before process before eutectoid with the value of C not equals to zero point four five weight percent of carbon from iron carbon phase diagram. The similar, um, the relative amounts of pro eutectoid alpha and perlite may be determined in a manner similar to that described in previous lecture for primary and eutectic micro constituents. And we use level rule in a conjunction with a tie line that extends from alpha to alpha plus uh, ferrite uh, cementite uh, phase boundary, which is equal to 0.022 weight percent of carbon to eutectoid composition, which is equals to 0.76 uh, weight percent of carbon. In as much as perlite is the transformation product of astronite having this composition. So from there, you can calculate it, the um, weight fraction for perlite and austenite, which is equal to 0.58%, 0 0.42, uh, 0.42 weight percent. So from there, we know that the, um, um, uh, the, the material or the specimen can be isothermally treated um, below the austenite temperature which is 0, 0680 degrees C over here because you want to produce um, a perlite and uh, a cos perlite and ferrite, prototype ferrite. Okay, so cool it uh, over here and hold the temperature, hold the temperature until it reaching uh, this point, which is alpha uh, ferrite, prototype ferrite and cos perlite. Now moving to question B, 50% um, fine perlite and 50% by night. So this is how you draw. We know that this is uh, this uh, this is the area where we want it to achieve 50% uh, perlite. Oh sorry, 50% perlite and by night. Okay, somewhere here. Okay, so isothermally treated. Uh, 59, 50 degrees C, somewhere there. So you draw a line there until it reach 590 degrees C. And then uh, hold that temperature until it reach 50% uh, of uh, perlite. So this line represents 50% of perlite. After that, isothermally treated at temperature of 470 uh, degrees C, which is at this point, 470 or 490 or 500, okay? Whereby at this point, then uh, hold it, hold 950, uh, sorry, 470 point here. So 
hold it at that temperature until it reach 100 percent uh not 100 percent. i mean the remaining arsenide form to uh, transform into a uh, binite so you reach at this point then uh, cool it down uh, at room temperature so that's how you draw uh, the line at this uh, at this ttt uh, graph diagram after that 100 percent matricide 100% matricide can be produced, can be only produced from rapid cooling at room temperature from a arsenide temperature, rapid cooling, so straight away from 100% matricide. If you want to form 50% uh, matricide and 50% arsenide, which is question D, then still rapid cooling but a bit longer, a bit longer than until it reach um, this line which is which the temperature around um around two around 300 degrees c then it will start to form 150 percent uh, matricide and 50 percent austenite okay uh now let's move on to um uh Next content, which is hardened ability of ferrous alloy. Well, hardened ability is a term that is used to describe a given steel's ability to harden, and it doesn't mean what hardness can be achieved from uh, uh, from this term. It is usually determined by the Jomini and Quench test. In other words, it will show the depth of hardening across an equivalent diameter bar of steel. Um, and the harder malleability steels depends primarily on the composition of the seal, austenitic uh, grain size, the structure of the seal before quenching, and the cooling rate. This is how you conduct a Jomini test. You place the specimen over here with the with this size. The specimen. I mean, after you heat the temp uh, the specimen in uh, furnace, then take it out. Take it out quickly as quick as possible and place it over here and start to spray water to the specimen starting from uh, this end okay after that we can calculate the um, hardness of the materials either using Jomini test or um, Brinell test Brinell hardness test mm. For 1080 plain carbon steel, this is a code for plain carbon steel. The hardness value at quench N is 65 uh, Brinell hardness, while it is 50 uh, Brinell hardness at 3 over 60 inch from quench end. So this is how you calculate the basically this is how you calculate the uh, hardness value hardness of the steel starting from point where the um, material starts to reach um, uh, start to start start uh, receiving not receiving starts to uh, cold start to cool okay because at this point um, um, the 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 water will spray at that area first from this point so cooling rates cooling start to form this point until at the uh, bottom uh, at the upper part of that specimen and alloy steel for uh, 4340 has high hardability and high hardness of high hardness with the value of 40 brina hardness 2 inches from quenched end this one is another grade of uh, steel alloy and in steel in alloy steel the composition of arsenide to ferrite is delayed because um, the uh, cooling rates actually depending on the diameter of the bar, quenching media, and cross section of the specimen itself. That's how. That's why the composition or the or the deformation of a transformation of arsenide to ferrite is being delayed. These are the data that you can get uh, through Jobini hardenability test. Okay, this is the hardness value to Rockwell's uh, scale, and this one the distance of the specimen. Okay, distance. Okay. Other than that, um, there's a there's a process known as annealing. 
Annealing um, is the restoration of coal work or heat treated alloy to its original properties. While in real life, for example, if you are referring to a human being, um, after certain duration, uh, after working, after um, um, a training, certain training, we might feel stress, we might feel um, um, what uh, so muscle soreness and so on so to reduce that part to uh, to to gain freshness of our body then we need to go to spa so after spa then you'll feel as good as new okay so same things to uh, steel after certain work or being heat treated it will feel stress so to reduce that stress to and to to um, uh, gain its original properties, then we will introduce annealing process to it. Okay, uh, three process involved in annealing, which is heating the workpiece to specific range of temperature in furnace, and then holding that temperature for certain period. After that, air furnace cooling, put it in uh, furnace to slowly cool the temperature. I mean, cooling, cooling, let it cool together with the furnace. Um, in annealing, the so-called full annealing and process annealing. Full annealing sample is heat treated. Heated sample is heated to forty degrees C above austenite ferrite boundary, held for necessary time and cooled slowly. Meanwhile, for process annealing, is used for stress relief, applied to hypo eutectoid steel only at eutectoid temperature, and an annealing process is used to increase the ductility, to reduce hardness and strength, as to modify the microstructure. Uh, this is uh, the location of annealing, this side, if you are referring to temperature and carbon uh, percentage over here. Number four is normalizing. Normalizing, um, referring to the process whereby the steel being heated in austenite region and cooled in steel air or normal air, and not a blowing air or using fan, no, as a steel air. Some, are, some of the purposes for normalizing includes to refine the grain structure, to increase the strength of the steel as compared to annealed steel, to reduce composition segregation in castings or forgings, and those provide a more uniform structure, to avoid excessive softness from annealing of steels cooling in steel air, and to decrease residual stresses and to improve machine ability. Fine prolat with small uniform grains. Um, they have higher strength and hardness, but lower ductility than full annealing. So you can refer to this diagram for hardness versus carbon co carbon content here. Materials that being um uh, being exposed to normalized uh, process, it will have um um lower mm -hmm. for this case high hardness quenching and it's okay um sorry um i'm talking uh, the, for this case i'm referring to quench uh quench specimen and normalized uh, uh specimen so we'll have lower hardness as compared to a quench specimen number five is tampering um in this process mutton side steel is heated at temperature below eutectic temperature uh, this process will make the steel become uh, softer and become much more ductile. Carbon atoms in low carbon steel segregate themselves on tempering. And for tempering, we can see several um, structure for uh, several structure in it, like uh, rod like or spherodite uh, kind of like uh, structure. And this structure will form at different temperature. So um, that's why I said earlier we need to control the temperature so that it reach, uh, it produce, um, to it produce a microstructure that is uh, needed by us only. Okay, so that's tempering and. Hardness, okay, hardness it decreases as temperature increases above 200 degrees C. 
Oh, so let's look, let's look at this uh, hardness versus temperature over here. So as uh, the temperature increases, increase, the value of hardness decreasing. So you can see the trend from this uh, profile over here. If you compare with 1.2% uh, carbon steel and uh, 0 0.8 carbon or 0 0.3 carbon steel it's all going uh it's all going down it's all decreasing in hardness when temperature keeps in increasing for tempering number six is mar tempering the mar tempering or mar quenching process of uh, is for plain carbon steel produces a martin sub microstructure and consists of number one austenizing the steel Number two, quenching the seal in oil or molten salt at a temperature just slightly above the mutton side uh, temperature, MS temperature. Holding the seal in quenching medium temperature for a long for a time period sufficient to provide thermal equilibrium of the steel with the medium without causing the initiation of the austenite to brinite transformation. And number four, cooling the steel at a moderate uh, rate to room temperature. The benefits of ma tempering are to um, minimize the distortion and crack of the workpiece. Number two, by subsequent tempering, the ma tempered steel develops develops a tempered mountain side microstructure, which provides higher impact energy. Number seven is aus tempering. In aus in aus tempering, um, steel is heated. Uh, I mean, heated steel is quenched from austenizing temperature rapidly enough to avoid formation of ferrite and perlite, and then held at certain temperature until isothermal transformation from austenite to bainite is complete, and then cooled at room temperature. Medium of quench is a molten salt. Uh, molten salt cold in steel air so never use fan uh, or other um, um, other medium to move the air so it has to be steel air there okay so uh, in our awesome, tempering process the steel is austenized yeah, also nice, which is below than uh, 7 to 3 degrees C. Then quenched in a molten salt bath at temperature just above the steel MS temperature. After that, hold it isothermally um, until the austenite to binite transform completely this side. At this point, it will transform completely, then cool at room temperature. So it is called aus uh, forming. So now let's move on to our next topic, which is last topic for today, which is mechanical properties. And as mentioned to you in previous lecture, as well as in early chapter, the uh, carbon content in steel will affect the properties, mechanical properties of that materials, whereby by increasing carbon content, carbon content, uh, the tensile uh, strength and yield strength will increase. However, the percentage of elongation will decrease. So it happens um, both for um, hypo, eutect hypo uh, eutectoid or hyper eutectoid. Um, for fine perlite, coarse perlite, and uh, spherodite, the properties also will be different, even though fine perlite or coarse perlite might be determined as the same material fine, uh, which is perlite. However, the structure is slightly different. So uh, in this um, structure, in this uh, microstructure, um, the hardness, um, the highest hardness goes to fine perlite, moving to coarse perlite and uh, finally uh, spherodite. And the higher the materials, the ductility of it will decrease. So for this case, fine perlite will have the lowest ductilities as compared to coarse perlite and spherodite. How about perlite and martensite? Martensite has higher hardness than fine 
than perlite because matanza is hard and brittle it is formed through uh, fast cooling okay uh temperate martensite heat treat martensite to form a uh, tempered martensite tempered martensite less brittle than martensite tempering process reduces internal stresses caused by quenching so that's why tempered martensite have lower uh, have lower um uh, ductility Martin, yeah lower uh, high ductility and you know, a lower hardness sorry uh, tempered martensite has lower hardness than um, uh, martensite. You can refer to this uh, graph over here for yield strength and tensile strength. Um, martensite is tempered to improve its mechanical properties. Tempering by heating, hardness is reduced and toughness is improved. Heating at temperature of 150 degrees C to uh, 650 degrees C, where it decomposes to two phase consists of BCC ferrite and small particles of cementite. Increasing temperature, tempering time and temperature, hardness decrease due to particles of cementite grow bigger. And uh, this um, graph over here showing a hardness and toughness of annual steel. Figure A and B showing a hardness, C, toughness for annual carbon, plain carbon steel as a function of a carbide shape. Um, carbides is in perlite. Uh, carbides in the perlites are lamella in shape. You see, remember what are the lamella shape, right? Fine perlite is obtained by increasing the cooling rate. The spherodite structure has sphere-like carbide particles. And if you notice from this uh, graph, the percentage of perlites begins to decrease after 0.77 weight percent of carbon. And um, this graph showing a mechanical properties of annual steel um, as a function of composition and microstructure. If you look at uh, figure A there, graph A uh, shows the increase in hardness and strength. Meanwhile, for B, the decrease showing you a decrease in ductility and toughness with increasing amount of perlites and iron carbide. So in summary, first of all, we need to heat all the uh, material or carbon steel to astronaut temperature. Slow cooling will produce perlite. Okay. Moderate cooling will produce bionite. Rapid cooling will produce martensite. And reheat the martensite is called i mean uh, tempering is called tempering process which will produce tempered martensite and in general the higher the strength uh, of that microstructure of that uh, a specimen then the ductility of that specimen will decrease with that i thank you very much for your kind attention and time i do hope everybody understand on this topic as well and if you still do not understand yes you may always contact me it's either through google classroom or whatsapp uh, group and this is actually the end of chapter four which is the end of uh, co2 so by right next week uh, we are going to have a quiz for co2 with that i thank you very much please be prepared and have a nice day bye bye